Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're going to be discussing the results of the Mead Tournament of 2020. And uh, I want to kind of dive deeper into it than I did before. So the way this tournament worked um, was I brought my friends over. I had my 16 meads that I had created, um, you know, old and some kind of young and whatever. And we faced them against each other in this tournament style bracket. So the whole tournament happened and we judged everything in the tournament based off of uh, mainly the uh, what we liked more of, like which mead tasted better than the other. Um, we got a little bit into the nitty gritty of like why it tasted better, each one tasted better than the other, but we really just based it solely on which one was more enjoyable. The other kind of competition we did was before the tournament started, um, when they came over, we sat down, I distributed the meads, and we taste tested every single one of them and judged them based on a series of categories. And I'll show you a picture of the, the uh, paper I'm using and the, the judging sheet. Uh, so it has some important things on it, like of course, what mead is it? Um, or sorry, what mead number is it? Because they didn't know what mead, uh, what meads were what. They knew, only knew what numbers they were. So I had randomized them um, about a week ago and given them random numbers. And so I even didn't really know what was what because I tried to not remember what numbers I assigned. I tried to make it as fair as possible. So each mead had just a number. And then of course, in the back end, I was able to say what was what. The judge number, um, I was the first judge and uh, Chris was the second judge. Tony was the third judge. The score sheet, what they each mead was judged on was, was this, uh, color and appearance, you could give that up to 10 points. So color, what color is it? Appearance, is it hazy? Does it have uh, lots of um, legs or like bubbling, stuff like that um, on there? The nose or bouquet, so what does it smell like? Uh, does it smell like honey? Does it smell like a mead or wine or whatever? And when you taste it, of course, if it tastes like cherry, does it smell like cherry on the nose? So there's some points there for that. Flavor, how's it taste? Does it taste good, bad? Does it have a weird thing going on? Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, finish, does it finish with, um, you know, alcohol burn? Does it finish with a nice taste of whatever, you know, flavor you got in the beginning? Um, character presence, sorry, honey character presence. Does it taste like honey? Does it have those, the warm um, floral notes that a, a mead should have? And then of course, mouthfeel, body, does it feel thin? Is it like slimy? What does it taste like? Or what does it feel like? Uh, totaling up to 70 points and we'll talk about that here in a second I have all of the um, all of their results all of my results and the top uh, the s entire score sheet of what was ranked first overall for everybody and that stuff so then they, of course they could guess what meat it was so let's go ahead and get into the actual um, the judging portion I am going to go through and you can see here on the screen I have um, taken and tabulated everything for each judge. So the, um, like, you know, each, there's the judge number, there's the mean number, this is what was truly there. Uh, and, you know, of course I put like, what, what did they guess, those things. So let's go off of, I'm first gonna discuss, before I get into the, I know that everyone wants to know what the number one mead was, but I want to get that here in a second. Uh, I had a couple, I'm going to go off mine first since I was judge number one. I had a couple ties. You can see my total points. Um, I get, only gave a few like meads the top point value. Mead number three, um, which I, I guessed wrong. Uh, I thought it was the Orange Blossom Traditional. Is actually the winner of the 2018 tournament. Um, got a 10 out of 10 for color and appearance and almost fi uh, 15 for flavor. That one was pretty good. It was the highest rated on my list. Um, then coming in second place, yeah, coming in second place was the Mixed Berry Mead. Um, in third place, the Pineapple Habanero, which if you have watched the um, tournament, hopefully you have, if you haven't, then go watch it because I'm giving you spoilers for what's happened. Um, the pineapple, pineapple habanero was the one that actually won. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those, but you can see here, this is my uh, point values I gave. And um, I, I do want to talk about a couple things. One, I want to mention that, yes, the pineapple habanero mead won, but it was not for everybody the highest uh, point. Like, we didn't give it the most points. For me, I only gave it 60 out of 70. 
It was not my highest. Um, for Chris, he gave it 58. I mean, it was consistently high up there. And Tony, he gave it 53. He gave it the lowest of all. Um, so that, I thought that was really inter interesting. And we all, if you look at the guessing, we all figured out that that was it pretty quickly because um, habanero is a hard flavor to miss. Uh, let's talk about the runner up, which was the mixed berry mead. So um, Tony gave it a 63, which is pretty high up there. Um, Chris gave it a, let's see, make sure I'm saying the right one, 55. And I gave it a 61. So that one was up there. It was actually um, higher on the list, like of the top 10. I think it was really interesting um, because we, I know these meads, I thought I knew these meads really well, but I think when you're put in a blind taste test situation, you wind up um, maybe missing some. So I definitely missed a few meads and um, you can see here, if you want to, to look at this list yourself, I'll put it down in the description in a Google Drive so you can pull it up and check it out and see like what we guessed. Some of them were consistent that I picked up. Um, I forgot to go on here. I meant to go on and say how many we each got right. Um, and I didn't do that, so that's my fault. But uh, I, I think I was pretty close. I, I got a couple of them mixed up. A couple of my traditionals, like I thought the, um, which one was it? The, uh, oh, like the orange blossom traditional and the, uh, the clover traditional were flipped. Um, I think that happened with them as well. So if you want to check out this list and see kind of the point values of what, you know, what was given, um, for sure, go, go check that out. Um, but I thought it was just really interesting to see that may, maybe I was being really hard on my meads, but like Tony, who is somebody who does a lot of stuff with wine. In fact, his day job is literally working with wine and, and helping people pick out good wines. Um, he was really kind, maybe kind, or maybe he really liked these things because uh, he gave some high scores and of course some low scores. I do want to talk about that. The lowest score that each one of us gave, uh, um, let's see, I'll start with me. So I gave my lowest score was number, mead number eight, which was the pear mead. I was just not a fan of it. It was really thin, really watery, like consistently across the board. You can see uh, it had a good, um, a decent nose, but everything else was just terrible about it. I gave it such a low score 24 my second lowest was the clover traditional which was like two and a half years old um the first lowest for chris was the pear meat as well it's kind of interesting he gave it a 29 um and the second lowest for him was the joe's ancient orange which i thought that was really good i gave it a 57 it's interesting but um and then the finally the lowest lowest which Tony really liked this one, and that was kind of funny during the actual tournament because he he was going on about how he he enjoyed it, and we were kind of like, I just didn't like it. He gave that pear meat a uh, 58, which was kind of funny to me. And the lowest for him was the cherry mead, uh, just the regular cherry mead, not the white chocolate cherry. The second lowest for him uh, was the peppermint mead. Yeah, he wasn't a fan of that one. Okay, now let's get to the part where you guys, I know you're you're wanting to see this. This is the placement for everything. This is how everything mixed came out. Um, this is based off t uh, point totals, not specific uh, areas, not like flavor or anything like this. This is just point totals. So in first place, and all the points, was the mixed berry mead, the 179 points. Um, then white chocolate cherry was second place with 175 and third place, um, pineapple habanero, 171 out of 210. What's interesting to me, the top two at the end were the mixed berry and the pineapple, or pineapple habanero, but the pineapple actually won. It wasn't the highest, uh, well, the, if you're going strictly off the numbers, the ratings that we gave, you would think the mixed berry would have won because of that result. However, it wasn't. It was the, um, it was pineapple habanero. Uh, a very close in fourth place was the apple pie boche with 170. The basic boche was also close, 168. Cherry mead in sixth place, 164. Then we had um, a couple ties, and I forgot to put a tie right here. This is a these two are a tie. This tenth place, um, the in seventh place for a tie we had the apple cinnamon mead, and I love this. This is one thing I wanted to mention: the uh, peppermint mead, which 
if you know anything about the 2018 tournament, um, those two are the last ones to be, you know, they were um, first place and second place. And the apple cinnamon ended up winning over the peppermint mead. So I think it's really funny that they tied in this. And I can't say that I even rigged it at all because this is based off two other judges' opinions. And somehow our points, the points combined to be um, even, that's pretty wild to me. Um, then we have the Orange Blossom Traditional, which was ninth place. Uh, very close in, in tenth place with a tie, we have the uh, Chocolate and Vanilla Boche and the Mango Mead, both at 156. Then Joe's Ancient Orange, 150 in twelfth place. Watermelon Mead, uh, 13th place, 149, really close. In 14th place, the Raspberry Boche, the a Clover Traditional, with 130 and then the final one that we all except for tony um didn't really like was the pear mead and that was 16th place so that's the end um that's the total tabulation again if you want to see this list it's in the description i'll make sure and include that and uh, i'll probably go through and edit i don't have it in my current state but um how many we all got right out of the 16 because uh, i think that'll be interesting so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. This was the secondary side of the tournament, and I'm not going in super deep with all of the numbers behind it because I think it could take a long time to do that. But um, there are so many other things I could have done here. I could have gone through and tabulated which one got the most flavor points, which one got the most finish points and those things, but I didn't want to dive that deep. To be quite honest with you, I've spent, um, I think now 10 hours editing the, the tournament alone and then I've also spent about, you know, five hours preparing and then shooting this and tabulating these. It's just been so crazy. But I hope you've enjoyed this. This was the other competition that I had mentioned. And um, this one was almost just as fun to me because I got to uh, get some invaluable uh, information about my own mead making. And I think it's important that you guys, when you make your meads, you don't just listen to only your judgment, but you get some judgment of other people. Uh, I will also include um, this little mead score sheet. I'll of course take off my, the what mead is it, but uh, that way if you want to use this score sheet for your friends, um, you can go ahead and, and use that. And I would highly recommend to, to judge your meads based off that. Uh, I did not go off the BJCP guideline for mead making and judging. I know that that's kind of, that has its own list and I didn't want to dive into that with them because I just felt like it would have taken a whole lot longer. So uh, this has been a lot of fun. I'll do another one of these in the future. Don't know when, don't know what it will include, but I hope you guys will uh, tune in for that one. And make sure to go check out the tournament, share the tournament, because man, I've spent so many hours on this. It's been a lot of fun and I, I hope that it's been enjoyable. So thank you guys. Have a great day and cheers.